Today on, Barack Obama will go down in history as the first U.S. president to endorse same-sex marriage publicly. We're following the breaking news and what it could mean for the country and for the presidential campaign. Listen to what the president told ABC News about his change of heart. Over the course of uh, several years, as I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together, uh, at a certain point I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is Gay Pride Weekend in New York City. Certainly a lot of people were looking forward to this. And now, thanks to a last-minute push by lawmakers, now New York more than doubles the number of Americans living in the states that allow same-sex marriage. New York is now the sixth state to allow gay marriage, plus the District of Columbia. And the president himself has said that his position on the issue is, quote, evolving. But in a speech at a gay fundraiser on Thursday, he reiterated that his stance has not changed. But for many in New York, Friday night's vote was a very personal victory. We're getting married September 24th. In New York City. In New York City. The ruling says that it's unconstitutional for same-sex couples to be denied benefits by the state's current civil unions law, making New Jersey the latest of now 13 states to allow same-sex marriages. We might not have the protections that the word marriage could bring us. And now knowing that we won't have to have that fear anymore, that we will have security. This is a very proud moment. Most surely, it is a proud day in the history of the legislature and in the state of Washington. I'm proud that our same-sex couples will no longer be treated as separate, be equal. They will be equal in the great state of Washington. Details of John and Jenny Dee's illicit affair were broadcast on 60 Minutes last night. We don't see each other as father and daughter. I don't the couple see. said their sexual relationship began when they were reunited after three decades apart. But the Dee's have no qualms about explaining to Celeste her father is also her grandfather. My story today is so shocking, I almost didn't believe it until they provided us with proof. Brittany is an 18-year-old girl who is having a sexual relationship with her own biological father. Okay, you know what? I don't even know if I have the stomach to even continue with this show. Um, you probably need to see a doctor and get some kind of therapy and really so We have a father who not only preys upon his own daughter, takes advantage of her. Praise. Praise. I'm praying upon her. Are you yes. sleeping with her? Oh, yeah, but you're First of all, why are you sitting collection. in my chair? Get the hell out of my chair! John Forehand, uh, he is from Pennsylvania, asked his daughter to have sex with him on Facebook. He refers to himself as baby daddy, and he wanted his girlfriend to be his uh, special little girl. Yeah, that is uh, obviously nothing but sick, and uh, also nothing but incredibly stupid. Right. He sent her several messages. In one of the messages, he told her, I'll take very good care of my little girl. In another one, he said, this just made me so sick. In another one, he said, not many other fathers and daughters are, are this brave, so not many of them are lucky to experience all these pleasures. By the way, his daughter's 13 years old. And he's 39. They have fallen in love with one another. And now they want to marry since the mom. 
Betty Mbreko from Wunitsa in Masvingo, is five months pregnant and expecting her son's child. Mbreko, 42, who was widowed 11 years ago, has been cohabiting with her first child, Farai Mbreko, 23. She confirms that she is six months pregnant and that she has decided it is better to marry her son because she does not want to marry her late husband's young brothers, whom she says are coveting her. An environmental activist has married a tree in Buenos Aires in an unusual effort to bring attention to global environmental concerns. Sporting a sharp white suit and a blue hat, Richard Torres held a bouquet as he looked upon his future tree-to-be in one of the main parks in the city. Torres placed symbolic natural products at the tree's base before reciting his wedding vows and receiving a ring. He then went on to kiss the bark of the tree. The 33-year-old actor says that this is only the beginning of his quest to help the environment. This is Torres' first ecological event outside of his native country, Peru, and the actor plans to continue his unique form of activism to several other countries throughout Latin America. One more quick story, Lewis, if I may. Yes. Police say that an infant died after her mother invited her pedophile boyfriend to rape the kid, where she invited her boyfriend, Jordan Lafayette Prince, to come over to her house and and, and, and molest her four-month-old daughter. It ended up not going too well, who could have predicted, because the individual on the left here, Jordan, showed up, and not only did he uh, have sex with a four-month-old, he then strangled her to death. The four-month-old or four-year-old? Um, uh, it's a four four month old infant. Four month old. Four okay. months old. Yeah, incredible, and being held on a million dollars uh, bond. And the other, the, the crazy thing is, and this is just unbelievable, that that police said the strangulation didn't even make a difference. That the physical trauma from the rape itself would have led to this little girl's death. The, these people are just absolutely sick. Yeah. Ha have you heard of? A, we've talked about a lot of heinous cases. I don't remember anything this sick. No, this is, uh, this might be the worst one we've ever, we've ever brought up. Oh, um, marriage to three women, is, isn't that illegal? It is, it's a third degree felony in the state of Utah, so it's not anything I have taken to do lightly. And then the other part that I know people are going to react to is that you're all kind of related, you're either cousins or your sisters, and isn't that part kind of weird? We, we three are, but none of us are related to Joe, and... Uh, the sisters part is no different than Rachel and Leah in the Bible, so no different than Rachel and Leah in the Bible, so it's, and culturally, you know, um, sisters will sometimes marry the same man, so it's not so weird to us. Uh, Joe, seriously, you need a lot of energy to keep up with this, don't you? Come on, man. Really? Well, it is, this isn't for the faint of heart. Uh, certainly, uh, if it's about sex, there's easier ways to go about it. But, right. but the right. amount of commitment it takes is 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 a lot. And yeah, it, it, it can be exhausting at times. And but, Emily, you still you know, there? What I don't understand, no, God, God made one wife for one, you know, one guy, not ten of them. What do you guys say to the those sorts of spiritual principles? Personally, I think you're all not. Well, I think so. Do you, so you're not legal, all legally married. No. You're only legally married to marry. Correct. Your first wife, right? That's right. So um, the rest of you got married in a ceremony, a church type of ceremony? Yeah, just yes. a religious ceremony. Just yes. a religious ceremony. And that's okay with everybody. How do you find the time to be with all these women? Well, you just... I, I quit watching TV as much. Well, I can tell you that they might be a little more timid right now because we have 45 days to file again for this lawsuit. Um, but no matter what, we're going to continue practicing body freedom. We're not going to go away, but in a society that's repressed and crazy and glorifies war and at the same time criminalizes the human body, in a society like that, nudity is a political statement. Why are they throwing us in jail if it's not a political statement? What are they so worried about? As of right now, you've got five minutes to cover yourself. Okay, well, at can the you explain to me how is this wrong? How is this criminal? Only in San Francisco will you have people fighting for the right to be naked on city streets. What was supposed to be a wedding ended up with two people getting ticketed for exposing themselves in front of City Hall. This is the ordained minister who's supposed to deliver the wedding vows. The Bible, which is not really a Bible at all. Actually, this is a famous book. Then, just before the actual exchanging of vows, the bride and groom and the minister stripped down buck naked. 
Sorry for the blurred video, but trust me, you ain't missing a thing. And we want to warn you about this next story. It is very graphic. Police have arrested a 23-year-old Las Vegas woman for having sex out in the open with a pit bull. Metro says Kara Elizabeth Vanderbeek was naked in her backyard performing sexual acts with the dog. According to court papers, people walking by the house on North 16th could see what was happening and they called police. Officers think she was under the influence. Disgusting, disturbing, and just plain wrong. That's all we can say about a case of animal cruelty caught on tape. The owner of the abused dogs couldn't believe what happened until police showed her the video. Tonight, she shared the shocking details of the case only with CBS Atlanta's Tony McNary. 19-year-old Bernard Archer is here at the Newton County Jail tonight. He's accused of sexually abusing two pit bulldogs. And Lafayette says she was inside her home taking a nap when someone knocked on her door. When she stepped outside, several Newton County deputies were in her yard. And I'm thinking, oh my God, don't tell me that the dogs got out. She thought her dogs got out and attacked someone. He said, you have not done anything wrong. You're the victim. I said victim, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, did someone kill my dog? Lafayette ran to the kennels and saw her beloved pets were still there and still alive. And he said, no, the neighbor behind you, they oversaw the 19-year-old male having sex with your female dogs. I said having sex with my female dogs. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking, no, they must got it wrong. Lafayette didn't believe them until they showed her the video her neighbors recorded. And it showed him on his knees inside the kennel with my dog. And he was on his knees like he was a, like he was a dog. Police arrested 19-year-old Bernard Archer. Barbara Kenley says her horse of 15 years, Sugar, is like a child to her. But a year and a half ago, she discovered this man, Rodel Vereen, inside Sugar's stable. He pleaded guilty to having sex with the horse. I mean, I don't know how to explain to you the sick feeling. Vereen was placed on South Carolina's sex offender list and got three years probation. But Kenley says that was little comfort to her. Every night going to bed thinking, is that man out there with my animals? What is he doing to my horse? And uh, I, like I said, I just couldn't sleep thinking about it. Two men have been charged with animal cruelty after police say they had sex with horses on this Tennessee farm. Police say James Tate and the farm's owner, Kenny Thomason, have both confessed to having sex with the animals. They're being held behind bars. This isn't the first bestiality-related charge for Tate. Authorities near Seattle say he videotaped another man having sex with a horse in 2005. That man later died of internal injuries from the incident. Today we are going to meet a person who is going to marry soon. Uh, the difference is, he is going to select his bride today and you will get shocked when you see his bride. We all know the phrase, a dog is a man's best friend. But in India, one bloke has surely taken it too far. 33-year-old P. Selva Kumar has actually married a female dog. 